We've been restoring our 100-year-old farmhouse for over five years. Well, you know it's going to be a tough grind. You're going to dance until your feet fall off. You're not able to stand up any longer, but we're going to have a show. Learning along the way and documenting every single part of it. This is our full house tour of all our hard work. Thank you, Simply Safe, for sponsoring this video. Hello! Welcome, welcome to our long-awaited house tour. You enter into the entryway, greeted by a very bright and fresh space. But before we renovated it, this whole area was blocked off by a giant wall, and the closet was a huge clunky cabinet here. So when you came in the door, you were literally you were squeezed. squeezed. And then there was like dark brick red flo like vinyl flooring and it was just not really a functional space so we removed the wall to open it up to the kitchen we ripped up the vinyl flooring and to our surprise there was hardwood underneath next thing we knew the whole kitchen floor was ripped up too and the same thing happened with the ceiling but put your own beams <laughs> and we made this built in with some hooks and a double layered rung so we really didn't lose any closet space. It's just a little more functional. We repurposed a side table to make this bench that also has storage underneath for all our doggy goodies. And I allow Ellie to have a place for one pair of shoes in our shoe rack. <laughs> the rest are mine and Millie's. And then also this is an old window from one of the bar barns on my family's property and we were lucky enough to have neighbors who had old photos of the property from back in the early 1900s so we like to have these hung here and a full length mirror so you can do a double take on your way out the door this is Elliot's storage cabinet because <laughs> I can't reach nothing in there not up Although when I do need something, I climb up like this. Short people problems. When we removed this wall and took out the door. Oh yes. Having a dog and living in a rural area with lots of mud, we added this. Which coincidentally has come in more handy for the child we need to keep out of this area. <laughs> Elliot made with the CNC machine and cut out this fabulous design. The plywood I used was actually from the old cabinet and the design is also reflected in our backsplash as well. And in the bench. And in the bench. In this door is our laundry room slash brand new half bath. We added a toilet, which was definitely the most practical renovation of the whole house. An absolute game changer because you don't realize how badly you need a toilet on the main floor until you don't have one. Yeah, this toilet gets a lot of use. <laughs> in order to fit a toilet and a sink in here, we had to redesign the whole space. Before the renovation, we used to have this big T-shaped cabinet in the middle, which honestly I kind of miss. However, the toilet was a priority in the space. So we took that out. We pushed the washer and dryer together to make room for the toilet and sink on this side. And then Elliot repurposed the materials to build these cabinets. We got to get creative. We custom did the, the shiplap panels. These are actually backwards and I used a stamp and sanded them and finished them. So that was kind of fun. This vanity was repurposed from an old table that we got and Elliot made a drawer. It's just a nice narrow little drawer for, I don't know, lip traps, extra deodorant or two on the way out. I made this to cover up, oops. We added this shelf behind the washer and dryer, which was super functional. It hides all the things that you don't want to look at. And then um, it serves our, our storage needs, which is really great. We've got stuff for the dogs and cleaning, garbage bags personal stuff. <laughs> and then over here we have all of our laundry things, which is really handy. Having it right above the washer, just... <laughs> it's also a lot more practical having the washing machine and the dryer right together. It's easy to 
Yeah, yeah, if you've been following us for a while, you know we're not very bold in the color department. So this room was a risk for us. I personally love it. I think Elliot still. I don't really it. jam with the darker color, to be honest, but it's moody. The one thing, though, I do wish we did in this space, we put a matte floor tile down here because I knew we would be walking in and out with wet shoes, and I didn't want it to be slippery. But matte flooring gets dirty really easily. Like the, the dirt almost sticks to it. So I kind of wish we would have put something glossy down because there is a lot of growth and it's really not slippery at all. Um, other than that, I like the space. Come on into the, the kitchen dum, ba -da -dum, da -da -dum, dum, dum. This is where we spend a lot of time. The kitchen is the heart of the home. So before the kitchen is what it is, it was pretty sad. We had tan colored vinyl flooring. We had a flickering fluorescent light. We had orange floral countertops. We had orangey pine cabinetry, but it is all the original cabinetry from the 70s that my grandfather built. And then we, we stained the shelves inside and a slight pop of color, we painted the back here a nice blue color. And when we refinished the cabinets, we um, added a detail to give it a little depth and dimension. We painted them white. We removed all the original hardware and cleaned it up and reused it. And then we added the crown molding around the top. Um, give it a little extra oomph. Elliot learned electrical and added more lights because it was just one central light. So now we have all kinds. I'll show you. Oh, bam. So we thrifted all of these. There's one of these light fixtures was original and then we thrifted all the rest to find matching or similar. How long did that take? Months to find similar ones. Months and months, <laughs> and months and months and months. And then now that we're done, I find them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> She's going for the dog food. This is example number one of why we have a gate. <laughs> I like, I like the layout of the kitchen. We didn't change any of that because it functions really well. I can do all my cooking, I can see if someone arrives, and then it's great because you go from the fridge, you wash your stuff, and this is my main workstation, which if you don't have one of these in your house, you are missing out. This pull-out cutting board is the best, not only because I'm short and it's practical for my height, but it's just super, super simple, and it's a great way to extend your, your workspace, especially in a small kitchen. Eventually, we'll probably update the fridge to match all of our stainless steel, but for now, we kept what we had. Between the fridge, the sink, and the stove, it's a good triangular workflow, which is great. And then all of this cabinetry on this side has kind of become our pantry area. We have intentions of making this a nice butcher block. Yeah. One thing you'll learn is that we tend to be 95 percenters, so we call ourselves. So pretty much in every project, there's always that lingering piece that it's we have. It's 95% done. <laughs> Everything's 95%. So over here, we had intentions of creating a really nice butcher block counter, but the original plywood counters has just been holding up. Yeah. <laughs> it's functional enough. This access all of our, our dry storage and snacks and cereal and granola bars. The backsplash tile in the kitchen is probably my most favorite tile that we've chosen in the house. I just love the curvature of it. I love the glossiness. I love the color of the grout. I love the height of it. It's also the first tile job that we did in the house. Yes. And I must say I'm quite proud of us. Yeah, we got the corners pretty nice. Wood floors are require maintenance. Yeah, this area gets the most traffic through the house. Yeah. And we're long overdue for another refinish. You can tell where it's like nice. <laughs> A big upgrade for the kitchen was definitely the countertops. Yeah. We splurged and we got quartz and we definitely don't regret that decision. I love how durable they are. I love how easy they're to clean. And I just personally like the fresh white. Makes my food look more appealing. I'll show you what the countertops used to look like. We made a, 
an artwork <laughs> of the countertops. And out from the kitchen, there's two doors you can choose from. You can either go through the hallway to the upstairs or living room, or you can go through Elliot's office, also into the dining room, living room. The office is in the middle of the house. And uh, it's my little nesting work spot. Visibility of all around the house, so I can know what's going down. But that's also a problem because it's right it's in the center of the house where all the action McGee. happens. And I'm easily distracted. One of our first rooms we renovated, actually, yeah. it was before our YouTube. I don't even think we have videos of it, do we? No, we have just photos. Here's some. Before. <laughs> After. And one of the parts of the office which I'm most proud about is my art wall you collection. You gotta shut the doors. Found in our journeys, all from a unique place and all with unique stories. This was my cubby equipment zone, and everything was out in the ready, but now with the little one scrambling <laughs> around, we can't have anything Nice below three level. feet. So now it's just an empty shelf. Oh, this is a, is a nice little piece. This was the first real Wabi Sabi camera, 2017. And uh, I turned it into a lamp. I just hollowed out the inside and added a light socket and wired it up and then drilled out a hole and added a switch. Now it's a little light, a little memento from our first Wabi Sabi camera. That's what happens when things break. Hopefully it turns into something else. Hey. I was, oh, this was clean. Organization is extremely important. But keep that closed for now. My chair. Gets worse than anyone right now. But <laughs> Well, if you're sitting down for a while, it's it's a good idea to invest in something that's comfortable to sit on. I invested in one of those Herman Miller Aaron chairs, and it's been great. Love this thing. My iMac from probably 2013, still trucking along. Stacked plywood, cut out. Quick, simple build. And then this was my prototype for a computer stand. That and has never gotten any further than a prototype. The biggest problem of trying to fix or renovate or do anything, if it gets close enough and it works just enough and you put it in place, that's a write-off. It's there for good. <laughs> and that's just been the reality for us. For years. And it's kind of the story through our entire house. The idea was just to lift the monitor at a more ergonomic height and add some cubbies with a little aesthetic design. Again, at the oh, ready. Oh yes, he's proud of that. Just a quick little gizmo, gizmo. If you have a knife around, and again, at the ready, the more uses you'll find for one and the more handy you will be. <laughs> this is called a jaw harp. It's a little thing that I saw on TikTok, which I was quite intrigued about. <laughs> Fun little thing to have on your desk. <laughs> oh, tape measure. Again, one of the most important things to have on your desk. If you're doing any kind of design or figuring outage, you're gonna need always a measurement. The idea also with these marks on my desk was for quick measurements, six inches, 12 inches. Rubbed off. Rubbed off and destroyed. Oh my goodness, nearly forgot. One of the things that I'm most proud of. A lot of hard work to get this little reward. Thank you everyone for being a part of this. And who's that cutie patootie? <laughs> Behind door number three, we have Welcome to the dining room, living room, and now rec room. This living room is just straight up dreary. 
It was a sad green color on the walls. It had a gray rug. The built-in was like that yellowy pine sort of finish. We refinished it, put a nicer color on the walls, brightened it up, exposed the chimney, and we pulled the carpet up, and that was really gross, and I will never lay a full carpet anywhere ever. Um, area rugs, yes. Full carpeting, no. I watched a lot of Gilmore Girls to refinish this floor and because it's an old farmhouse there's quite large gaps between the boards. We scraped out every single crack in the floor and then we stained the floors with our favorite stain, Puritan Pine. Honestly, if you're not doing like big renovations, just a simple fresh coat of paint can make a massive transformation. Let me introduce you to Igor. <laughs> The other man of the house. He is our punching bag. Since we don't have a rec space, he's in our dining room, living room area. Here, let me be the camera woman. Show us your moves, boy. Well, I used to take up a little boxing in high school, and then I stopped for whatever reason. Because you're a multi faceted and person. And then, then YouTube boxing came around, and just got me all hyped up again. I, I just, again, an impulse buy keeps me active and keeps me sharp with my snipes. Because <laughs> you have to do so much sniping around here. <laughs> Anyways, he's being a great purchase. I love him. Yeah, he gets used every day. Hannah doesn't like him very much though. Mm, I just don't like him in my living room. I mean, he was in front of the window for a while and you could see him like <laughs> walking through the house. Catch you off guard sometimes if you didn't know he was there. Anyways, as we mentioned, this room is constantly in flux, so as Igor makes his way around, and it's a playroom, and a dining room, and a living room, and a movie room, and he updated the big uh, built-in, which has been fantastic for storage in a house with no closets. So we've got all kinds of our tchotchkes, as we call them, our little trinkets and things. Yeah, Elliot's mom made this beautiful artwork. And then Elliot and I got these little guys um, as gifts when Millie was born. Some cake stands that I enjoy looking at. And my sister had this picture painted of me and Wally when Millie was in my tummy for Christmas. And um, yeah. And some old things we found in the barn. Things that bring us joy that we like to display. And these little frogs. I don't know where they came from, but I quite like the little frogs. And then down below, which is the best part of storage, now that we've kind of transitioned into a playroom for the Little Miss, um, we've got all kinds of storage underneath for books and toys and baskets. So she's got all these. And then even more down here. She's just starting to figure out how to open up the cupboard doors, so I just kind of give her one basket a day, so I only have to clean up a basket worth of toys. And it all tucks away nice and neatly. So this space also gets all the south-facing sun, so we've got most of our plants in here. Um, my plant lady-ness, I guess. We got this guy. Um, I don't know what to say about my plants other than I like them. Our big grungy couch yeah. <laughs> that we just took off the legs recently and lowered it on the floor, which was a great decision because when it's raised up just a little bit, it, it becomes just a dust and thing collector. <laughs> Wally loses his balls under there and then can't get them out and cries. So it was a really practical decision to just drop it on the floor, have nothing that could get underneath. Yeah, we're impatiently waiting to get a new coach because I can't justify getting a new one with three cats, a dog, and a baby. Um, this is very strategically placed. <laughs> Don't shoot the bathtub, it's there. <laughs> also, we usually have covers over the couch. Because Wally thinks it's his um, lounge space as well. What were you just saying? 
saying, you should be filming a behind the scenes reel of our house tour video. <laughs> Why? So people know that we don't actually live in a pristine house all the time. Life happens here. <laughs> Life happens, eh? Hi, Millie. Oh my gosh, what happened to our hallway? We're in the process of decluttering. Everything gets messier before it gets cleaner. He likes to, he likes to lay right here with his feet over the back and, and watch the neighbor's house. Um, doesn't bark when dry, cars come up our driveway, but we know when the neighbors have company. And that's usually Boop's spot. He's out on an exploration right now. <laughs> He's booping around, that's what we say. But again, the story of our furniture is just kind of secondhand mm. thrift store finding it in the garbage and then we get things we have good intentions we put it down and if it's just practical enough and it's already in place it sticks <laughs> the only like brand new thing in here is igor yeah, and igor was the most expensive thing actually <laughs> and this is donald the deer made this deer from old subfloor from one of our bedroom renovations and just cut out these pieces on the CNC and they just puzzle in together to create something cool. At least I think it is. <laughs> what a throwback. Hey, what noise does a deer make? This is a deer. I, I was close! <laughs> Really close. Did I tell you one time a deer, a mama deer was in the field when I was using the toilet upstairs and she seen me through the window and she was hopping and stomping. What <laughs> <laughs> my poop in peace. <laughs> From door number three to door number four. Anna and Elliot are a new family. With the addition of a new little loved one, safety is one of their utmost concerns. Is there any simple and affordable home security system to keep us safe, they pondered? The answer is yes, with Simply Safe. And now is the time to buy. Simply Safe is having their best deal of the year with 50% off their award winning home security system. Customized to your needs, easy to order, quick delivery, and simple setup. Simply Safe on. Home. Simply Safe also has a new wireless outdoor camera with an ultra wide field of view, 1080p HD resolution, and eight times the zoom. Being able to monitor all visible and invisible dangers inside and outside their home brings Hannah and Elliot peace of mind. Especially with Simply Safe's 24 7 professional monitoring that will notify the authorities in case of an emergency. Igor won't be sneaking up on them anytime soon. Save 50% or more on your Simply Safe security system during their biggest sale of the year. Visit simplysafe.com slash wabi-sabi to learn more. Into the hallway. One of our more recent refreshes. Yes. These are unfunctional mirrors. <laughs> they work for me, great. So I use this one. <laughs> <laughs> this mirrors, you know how some mirrors are good and some are bad? Like this mirror makes me feel like I look a little taller than I am. It's also a really good placement. Uh, a big mirror at the end of a hallway definitely makes the space feel bigger, entertains you on the walk down Sorry. because you're looking at yourself. <laughs> it's more of a, I gotta go now, do I look okay? <laughs> yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, so what did this room look like before? It was brown. Tan tan walls, tan stairs, brown railing, brown bulky overhead that Elliot bangs his head on all the time. Although that storage would have been useful now. Uh, the floors had thick beige paint on them that we had to peel off and sand and refinish. Paint stripper's real bad stuff, but it's really satisfying. It just bubbles away and then scrapes off. Yeah, stairs aren't very fun to refinish. Um, we had to peel off layers and layers and layers and layers of but paint. But before we peeled it off, oh, we yeah. made the mistake of trying to paint over <laughs> top of it. We Primer. put latex over oil-based paint. Oh, is and, that why? Yeah. 
it, you could scrape it off with your fingernail. It was horrid. Anyway, so we add it to the paint collection only to have to take it all off again. And I do regret painting the banister. It gets dirty very quickly. The paint's rubbed off a lot on it. And then we added beadboard to the walls to make them a little more durable. And after failing horribly on our first paint choice, we finally got it right. Now it's a lot more inviting and I'm not scared to go upstairs. <laughs> it is a workout though. <laughs> yeah, my glutes are thankful. And then Elliot made this beautiful light fixture. It used to just be one ball, but we wanted to pull the light down this way a little bit more. So, he made this for us. The light fixture was just plumbing scraps. I don't know, maybe $30 worth of material. And the design of the fixture was to bring light into each direction of the hallway that you could take. It almost guides you. <laughs> and it's on a dinner, which is nice in the evening when you forget something, you can just not blast your eyeballs out. Similar to the light, this line kind of like guides you back out around the corner, which goes back to the kitchen. And here's the entrance to the workshop cellar. The workshop cellar dungeon basement. <laughs> yes. What's behind you? This is Elliot's fabulous creation. It's a light. Hey Google, turn on the hallway light. Hey Google, make the hallway light purple. Hey Google, turn hallway light full brightness. It's also programmed to turn on every night when it gets dark and it's on a smart system that tracks the weather and when it's dark and gloomy and rainy outside it turns on a soft white glow. It's awesome and Millie loves looking at it when I carry her up the stairs. The hallway was just a big empty dark space with a large wall as an opportunity all cut out on the CNC. One of those functional art pieces where it's a night light, it definitely brightens up the space and it beautifies it as well. It's kind of vintagey but modern. Welcome to the upstairs. <laughs> if you're above five feet, watch over the slanted <laughs> roof because you will bang your head. If you're below five feet, don't worry about it. It takes only a couple times to, <laughs> to know. You have to walk you, like this. No, you gotta hug the railing oh, as you go up. <laughs> yeah. And then you have just enough space to get up. I literally don't think about it. It goes straight down the hall. <laughs> we carried the wainscoting up the stairwell and into this hallway upstairs. We have our beautiful family photos here. And we also exposed the chimney upstairs as well. The floors were already exposed, but same as downstairs, they were painted like a tan color, like a heavy oil thick hand paint. So we stripped all of that off and we finished it. Um, the walls were this dark brown oh color. Yeah, they were tan too. Yeah. Ooh. And then we painted it that awful gray color that was downstairs. Now we have this beautiful sandy color. And then there used to be a door that, that swung out into the hallway oh, that way. So you had to literally, like, it would either hang open because the whole house is slanted. So it would either hang open or if it was closed, you'd have to, like, come around to go in the bathroom this way. And it came out to, like, here. Yeah, it would so, block the entire hallway and it was just an obstruction. So yeah. Anyway, so when we were looking for those, they're quite expensive and we didn't need a whole door kit. And then my dad was like, oh, I got some of those in the barn. So these came from the barn. To your right, you have the bathroom. To your left, you have the nursery. Step ahead, left, right, <laughs> right, left. <laughs> spare room, other spare room that's currently acting as our primary bedroom. Ta-da. Which way do we want to go first? Our infamous bathroom. This renovation was definitely the most complicated, time intensive, and enduring project that we had to go through. But we got it done, and it's been an incredible transformation and a, an amazing addition to the house. And we're certainly reaping the benefits of that clawfoot tub. 
the claw foot tub. <laughs> 300 pounds of solid cast iron. And to get that up these narrow, sketchy, steep stairs it was a task and a half and definitely a complicated one. We had to- You made it complicated. <laughs> Anyways, it was worth all the holes in the wall, all the curse words, all the slides on the stairs, all the ramps to the yard. You name it. The farmhouse never used to have a bathroom. So my grandfather put a washroom in here in the 70s when they moved in. It was green and green and dark. Sea foam, olivey green bathtub. We had tan and green colored wallpaper. Um, there used to be a big giant wall here with a little narrow doorway that you had to come around that so was super tight by the toilet and then it was just dark and dreary over here. Taking out the wall made the biggest difference in the bathroom and kind of upstairs as well. So this bathtub we absolutely love. It's so comfortable and luxurious feeling. However, the DIY enamel kit is not quite durable enough for me. If it was getting occasional use, I think this is a great product and will definitely last. It's suitable for a family. It's not suitable for a main dog bath area and it's not suitable for, oh, have you guys been following the TikTok trend of laundry stripping? Well, I was and it intrigued me and it's disgustingly satisfying. However, I highly recommend it, but I do not recommend doing it in a tub that you've DIY'd enameled because dun dun dun, it strips the stain out and stains your tub. Yeah. So I've had to bleach this. It's slowly been fading. It was much darker than that. We were a little worried about storage, um, but honestly, it's been working out quite well. I just bought this little bathroom caddy that holds all of our needs, and we have this little shelf that goes on the shower rod, and you can pull the curtain back and have a shower, or you can push this down and have a nice relaxing bath. Except I'm short so it's more like. Oh baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Bubbles. I can watch my show, you know, have a glass of wine up there. I took an old dresser and refinished it into our vanity. And Elliot built this storage cabinet for us. Our dividers are life, especially in, in big drawers. Our hair brushes, hair ties. And then notch the big drawer around the plumbing pipes. Also another favorite feature. Soft close toilet lids. Honestly, it's one of those things that you don't know you need until you have one. If you're trying to train someone how to change the toilet paper roll, get a holder like this that it just slides on and slides off. It's frictionless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most success rated this one. So did that solve my problem of not replacing the toilet paper? 95% <laughs> of the time. You spend way more time in a bathroom than you think and it should be a place that's relaxing. And this one is. Sometimes I specifically come upstairs to use the wash. <laughs> also because there's a nice view. This is, the, this is where I was sitting when I was telling you about uh, the deer huffing and stomping. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing with your shoe? <laughs> is it number one or number two? Wouldn't you like to know? Also, this is the only room that has a lock on the door, so... Me time. And welcome to spare bedroom numero uno. This room is our kitty and plant paradise. This is the only functional spare room we have in the house at the moment, which serves as um, my secondary plant room, as well as where the cats like to hang out. It gets lots of afternoon sun. Our baby boppies have um, been taken over as cat beds. This room used to be a awful hospital green turquoisey kind of color. The window trims and everything were painted a dark green color. 
The floor was painted, and this floor is actually the first one that we ever refinished, and we had no idea what we were doing, so we sanded it all by hand. It was back-breaking work, um, but it turned out okay. And then this um, bed here was my great-grandfather's bed. This is the bed I had in my room growing up, but my, it's my mom's grandfather's bed. And then over here we have some vintage postcards of our local town. And this shelf was original to the room. We just gave it a fresh coat of paint in our favorite color. And Elliot got this beautiful artwork from a Reddit Christmas spot once upon a time. We got this bowl from the dollar store, <laughs> cut a hole in it, and now it's our light fixture. And it works out quite well, if I do say so myself. These are small bedrooms, but they serve their function, and honestly, I think they're a good size. Although, we could use some closets in here. And this room used to be my dad's room when he was growing up, so. Oh. And behind this door is our current main bedroom. The room before was a dingy gray carpet, had blue walls with a purpley burgundy floral wallpaper border which once we took that down the room automatically felt much bigger and then we ripped up the carpet finished the floors and a new coat of paint and voila sweet and simple we have a dresser a bed two nightstands a couple hooks some artwork and personables and a mirror what else do you need in your bedroom a blackout blind you don't have one of these in your bedroom? Are you even sleeping? Some more furniture with intentions of refinishing <laughs> that Always. once again put in place and it doesn't move. We've had this one since we started dating. Eight years in the making on the to-do list. <laughs> and that's a wrap in here. Come this way. corner we spend a lot of time here it's a small but functional room we were gifted this uh, crib from a friend of mine and we refinished it this dresser change table has been the best it was a Facebook marketplace find it's really great um, we've got some baskets and storage in here and then in the drawers I just got little dividers off Amazon which is perfect for all the itty bitty little baby clothes this room was the only actually happy looking room in the house. It had a nice cheery yellow paint on the walls um, with laminate flooring. So we ended up ripping up the laminate flooring to refinish the floors. Put on a fresh coat of paint. Elliot designed the tree in the corner, which we love sitting under. Baby, now's the time. Say you're glad that I'm loving you the way it's I It's playful, do. adds some personality and function. I like that it has all the little shelf cubbies and this cute little yellow lamp. One shiny nose finds a snack before bed. Two sleepy eyes, a little sleepy head. A lot of love went into this room and a lot of love's coming back out of it. <laughs> it's our um, storage unit drop zone. Once upon a time was our primary bedroom. <laughs> and we used to sleep in this room. We stopped sleeping in this room because of how dark and grungy it felt. Yeah, we and had three perfectly new renovated bedrooms and we were still sleeping in this room instead of one of our nice 
renovated rooms and we're like, what are we doing? This room is just a collect all. Keep decorating winter, summer gear, baby clothes and things, my sewing kit, my shoes, closets. Donate piles. Old beds. <laughs> stuff that we phased out, like we had single beds in, in two of the spare rooms. And the ceilings are really low. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but this is the room where we're probably the most excited for the finished product. This is the only room we have left to renovate inside the house. And she a big yeah, one. one. <laughs> Tell everyone the vision. The vision, okay. Well, first of all, we gotta clear out. Second of all, we've gotta rip down all the plaster um, because none of this room is insulated. So then we'll be insulating, drywalling. We're gonna take the ceiling out and pump it up to a peak. And then I'm hoping we have some beautiful beams here. And then um, we ideally would like to pop out this wall to put in a dormer window. So we'll get the morning sun coming in here. And then it's a very big room. So on this side, we'll also do like better built-ins for closet space, storage underneath. Um, and then on this side, because it's so long, like this room is the size of the kitchen, entryway, and laundry room all combined. So on this end, we might we might shorten the room up a little bit and make this a big walk-in closet area because we have no closet in the bathroom for towels and like comforters and things like that in the other bedrooms. And I gotta tell you, sleeping with Elliot, a dog, and oftentimes at least one, sometimes two cats, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting a king-size bed up here. <laughs> but... <laughs> it will have to be from a company that comes rolled up because there's absolutely no way we'll get a king size mattress up the stairs or through the windows unless it comes in when we're busting a hole. Exactly. And it's not crane it in. Crane it in. Yeah. So it's no. gonna come roll. I have my winch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> He'll probably winch up a rolled mattress just to use it. So king size bed will be wonderful. The next time you see this room, it'll probably look messier. <laughs> It's been a long time renovating this house. And through the renovations, we learned and grew so much. Renovations are hard. Yeah, <laughs> labors of love and testers of patience. Not just the renovation itself, but everything outside it affects. Yeah, like functioning while you're renovating the kitchen and the entire contents of your kitchen are in a hallway. But also when we renovated the bathroom upstairs, which was our only <laughs> bathroom in the house. We were bathing in a tote. Yeah. yeah. It just, it displaces so many things and yeah. you got to find spots for them and then you have to find systems to stay clean and organized through the whole renovation. Yeah. And that's my biggest struggle. Our biggest Our struggle. Our biggest struggle. Yeah. It just becomes entire chaos. Um, but it's always worth it in the end. Always worth it in the end. Yeah. And sometimes the harder and the, the more enduring a project is, the better at the end you feel somehow. It's just an awarding feeling once we we look back at a project and and get to reap yeah. the benefits of our hard work. Yeah, we've turned this house into a home. But it doesn't stop here. Oh, we no. have the honey to-do list goes on. <laughs> yeah. By the time we're done a renovation and we get to enjoy it, we immediately figure out things that we want to change and redo, or we break things that we just did. Yeah. So it's a, it's a perpetual cycle of renovations. We have a grand plan for not just the house, but actually the entire property, including the barn and the shed that I've been working on so hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> down the driveway. Yeah, big, big, big plans. So for all of those of you who are like, what are you going to do when the house is done? Don't you worry. We've got all kinds of things to do. Like, like and subscribe and share. <laughs> is a very